Does the comic's form have punctuation? I think it's an interesting question, and one answered by Darwin Cook's Parker series, amongst obviously many other comics, but I especially wanted to use Cook as a way to answer this, because more so than many other creators, he seems to have an incredibly dense and formally interesting work, but often under the guise of clarity and something away from complication. But what do I mean by punctuation? Well, consider it in the case of prose, where a comma may indicate a breath or a short pause, you know, a full stop the hard end to a sentence. There might be a paragraph break to separate ideas or themes, and the parentheses breaking off phrasing within a larger sentence, that sort of thing. So the question is, does that exist in comics as well? What I wanted to especially consider in this episode are forms of punctuation that cause pauses, because I think this is the easiest thing to kind of understand and translate across the comics. So stuff like commas and full stops, semicolons, that sort of thing. Now, I'm not looking to figure out if those things actually exist specifically, but rather if what they do, what they achieve, exists in a kind of similar way within comics. And the value of each of those is in creating some kind of rhythm, right? Some kind of reading rhythm for an audience. Knowing when to pause or slow down or ramp up by not using any punctuation at all, causing a kind of breathlessness in the reader. Or you want to tell them you're done with this section and to move on. You know, there's an endless set of reasons why you might want to use these punctuation points, but essentially it boils down to rhythm control. So in this episode, I want to explore how Darwin Cook utilizes the physical dimensions of the comic page in a way that creates similar beats of punctuation around the idea of the hard stop and what that says about the form of comics. You're watching Strip Pile Naked, I'm Hass, and I'm going to show you some of the cool stuff lurking in the pages of some of the best comics. So the easiest way, I think, is to think about grids. Uh, but I don't want to do another episode about grids, but suffice to say, you can structure a page in grids or without grids and still be considering punctuation. So even though we're going to look at a comic that has grids in this, the grids are not what are relevant as opposed to the content of that. So more important is to define the unit of the page. So if we take this page from the score as an example, the scene itself is longer than the page, it runs about 11 pages long, but the pages are split by what I'd say is an idea. The first page here establishes that Parker's calling off the deal because he killed someone who followed him. The second page in this scene establishes that Parker was being followed, set up by Edgars, and so on, so on, so on. So a scene is made up of pages, and each page establishes a new idea that furthers a narrative. So in Cook's case, it's often as clear-cut as this, right? One narrative goal per page, built up with character building, additional plot elements, or what have you. But at the center of each of these is a core, singular idea. So the first and biggest element of punctuation we can establish then is the page. Each page forms its own space, both physically in the properties of the comic and within the structure of the scene too. This is really an important point because it's actually really, really drastically unlike a lot of the visual media. The end of the page has a function. It acts as a hard stop. Even if your page falls on the left-hand side, there's still a moment between that and the top left of the next page. If the page falls on the right-hand side, it requires a page turn, in effect an even bigger leap from one image to the next. And this raises an interesting question about forced grammar as well, because the end of a page in prose does not necessitate thinking about your sentence any differently, right? It just sort of carries on to the next page, you carry on reading. But comics essentially forces you to use punctuation at the end of every page, because one panel can't just be split at the end of a page and then joined onto the top of the next page. So you have to consider what is presented in the final image, and how. In some cases, Cook will use it as the final beat on a scene. So at the end of this scene, for example, with this funny, well, fuck me gently line in the largest panel of the page. Suddenly, the rhythm that was established before this, of three panel tiers, is interrupted with a large image, and the two preceding panels of dense dialogue is broken by a much smaller balloon. So the rhythm of the phrasing and visual language shifts, and it does right at the end of the page, right at the end of the scene. In other cases, like back on this first page of the scene, Cook ends the page on an important revelation and beat. So here we see Parker explain why he killed the man that was following, because he pulled a knife. It's an important detail and it changes the rest of the scene and focus on the dialogue. It means that the end of this page is a little more important than if it was just a mid-dialogue flow. It has a little extra oomph to the beat as mentioned in the previous example. And I mentioned tears, which seem another interesting point because they're almost like mini page ends. To me, the end of the tier has a gap, a, a new line break, which might be a good comparison. As we read left to right in the comic, you know, we're going to hit that wall on the right edge of the page, which necessitates going back across to the left side, so that's the smallest of pauses as we navigate that. Cook utilises these exceptionally well, as each of his tiers is really a small phrase within itself. So, you know, if we look at the first tier, the knock-knock leading to an opening door and a hello from Paulus. 
The second tier is an intro to Paulus and ending with Parker revealing someone is following. The third tier responds to that and ends with a reveal about the man that followed him. It's not hard to see that each of those tiers is telling a larger idea or concept of the page, as mentioned earlier, but also it's split into three very clear sequences within that, each being stopped by the right side of the page. It's incredibly clean and clear and deceptively simple, but in that comes its pure readability. It's been designed to be processed as cleanly as possible. And I mentioned the gap between the tiers is quite small, but smaller still than that is also the space between panels on the same tier. The content of the panel forms its own punctuation, you know, of course it has to. The middle panel on this page ends with the deals off, which creates a very different end point than if the panel had stopped at Paulus's come on in. The emphasis naturally falls to the furthest right because that's the last thing you read. So starting a panel with the important beat is likely to be less dynamic than ending it with one. Consider this in almost every piece of Cook's writing in the Parker books, right? The next panel begins with what, responding to that important point from the previous panel, and it ends with that, someone was following me. And that's the big point. The next panel begins with a response, oh, that don't mean anything, before Parker ends the panel with, he's dead. This forms its own rhythm and punctuation. If you want the panel to be a sentence, say, it begins on the left and it ends on the right with a full stop. The flow and bounce of each panel can be built with this, which also means it can be managed in numerous ways. If we take a look at this final page of the scene again, where Cook removes multiple balloons from the panels, it forces emphasis on only one balloon instead. So that sweet Jesus in the second panel holds the whole weight of that moment, as opposed to being built off of another bit of dialogue in the same panel, say. I mean, these are all pretty basic concepts, I think, and things we've spoken about in various different ways in this series before, but I wanted to discuss them as a whole set of ideas that really do exist all at once. Each of them, considerations of text within panels, both visually and for the reader emphasis, you know, the hard right page edge for both tiers and the page end, these are all boiled down to the same core concept, which is to think of pacing and writing comics as a visual thing rather than something more prosaic, because each of these elements has to exist on a defined unit of space. Even as someone who may not be an artist, to utilize the proper form, function, and punctuation of comics, you have to be thinking visually, or it'd be like using a hyphen where you actually wanted a full stop. Cook had the ability of doing it all himself, of course, but as of any other medium, an understanding of the language feels crucial to use it in the way that gets the most out of it. And I was trying to decide how I could best punctuate, sorry to use that pun, this episode, and really hit home how effective this management of language is. And the best thing I could think to do was to flick to a random page in the score and look at how it worked and then ask you to do the same thing with whatever is on top of your to read pile right now, regardless of if you think it utilizes this kind of thing effectively or not, but just see how it treats the end of a page, the end of a tier and the end of panels. So here's what I got, right? This is much later into the book of the score. Without even looking too hard at it, I think you can see the hallmarks of Cook considering each of those three hard stops. The page itself creates one concept, which is introducing this character here into a place she shouldn't be, and establishing that it will have ramifications down the line. And the first tier is its own image, which therefore creates its own hard stop, that jumps you from an evocative image and narration, to the second tier with everyone in the truck. The second panel of that tier has two dialogue balloons, so she's coming along, has less weight than the final point, which is Parker will kill you. Already, that language creates an emphasis on the final beat, making Parker killing them larger than her coming along. It ends there too, the tier being punctuated by that idea. So tier 3 works in a similar way, two panels, each emphasising the final statement and leading the way to the final tier, which fully opens up before the page with a long image that eradicates a split down the middle. Meaning that this moment now extends, which doesn't allow No Troopers Yet, the furthest left dialogue, to be a main point in its own panel, but it forces the image to end on He'll Find Out Soon Enough, a cliffhanger for the hard stop of the very end of the physical page. This is really a small moment in a much larger sequence yet again, but even here you can see Cook managing the panel end, the tier end and the page end, creating small pockets of moments that begin and end across both the entire page, the tier and even in the individual panels. And it's this mastery of language which makes Cook one of the greats in comics, but also a wonderful example to learn from in how to write for a visual medium that forces punctuation on its creators. Thanks for watching. If you're a fan of Strip Pile Naked, you can support the channel by visiting the Patreon page, where for your pledge you get access to years and years worth of exclusive writing. You can follow me on Twitter at Hassan Oe and find my Eisner winning magazine at panelxpanel.com. And as always, hit subscribe and that notification bell to keep up to date with all the latest episodes, and I'll see you next time.